Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another Mandate of Heaven preview video. Today we're covering Prince of Trent, Liu Chong. So this is one of my favorite characters in this DLC. Uh, I've been looking forward to him for a while. That's why we skipped out on Liu Hong, who we will do soon. So Liu Chong here is easy starting situation, and indeed I think it's pretty easy for him. You start out with a massive amount of land, and you are a commander who excels at... Uh, crossbow units. You get plus 10% range damage for crossbow as well as plus 2 starting rank for all range units. Uh, they synergize very well. Historically he was known to be very skilled in crossbow. We already did a faction I guess kind of preview video when uh, CA launched their first let's play. We kind of broke down that video and discussed his faction from what I gathered from that video. Now we actually get to try him out. His faction specialization is a trophy case. So he and Lu Zhi both have this new unique uh, playstyle where you can collect certain items that can change uh, your playstyle a little bit, give you additional boost. We'll talk more about this once we get into game. He has two unique units. Uh, a level 6 higher unit can recruit the Chen Peacekeepers. These are anti-missile melee cavalry. Good morale, good armor, range opener. Um, I don't know what that means. Does it mean you're excellent at charging at enemy range units? And it has encouraged the nearby troops. Uh, very good, but rank 6 or higher, so probably not going to use them quite early. The one that I'm looking forward to the most is these Chen Royal Guards. These are crossbow infantry. Uh, you can get them on any character once you reach rank 3 or higher. All rounder, good morale, good armor, heavy missile attack. We're going to be spending a lot of time looking at these guys. Uh, not only do you only have one noteworthy character, you only have one character at the start of the game. And that character is Luo Jun, uh, the Guardian of the People. So we also talked about Luo Jun quite a bit when we did the breakdown video because we kind of broke down into Liu Chong's uh, lore. If you guys missed out on that video, I can put a link in. Uh, but just a brief discussion, very capable administrator, uh, born and raised in Kuaiji, uh, all the way down south here. Uh, he worked as an aide for the local administrator, did very well. So the administrator recommended him to get a job in the capital. So he traveled all the way over, he eventually became a secretary uh, to the emperor. Uh, emperor has many, many secretaries, so it's not like the secretary. But basically, he does jobs for the royal court where he met Liu Chong, who is the emperor's uncle. And Liu Chong kind of saw his skill and uh, asked him uh, to join him in the Chen land that he is the princedom of. So he borrowed uh, Luo Jun uh, from the emperor and he named Luo Jun to become his chancellor and all of that will be covered. So let's jump into the game. Uh, once again we are playing legendary legendary 40 minutes and let's start. Alrighty so we loaded up in here. Uh, we're the prince of Chen and uh, we are uh, Building a land of prosperity, be wary of Yuan Shu to the south. Historically, he assassinates us, and Luo Jin will be our guide. And he has to be our guide, and Shen Shi has to get killed again. So Shen Shi is everyone's opponent at the beginning of the game. I don't know what CA has against this guy, uh, but he's just been named the looter for everyone. Uh, we get plus 10 public order for winning this, plus minus 10% recruitment cost for 10 turns. Uh, both very, very good bonuses. And if we take a look at our starting location, we have the entirety of Intron, uh, including the commandery and the farmland. And the commandery uh, capital is also our capital, I believe. And over here, we have Chen, uh, which is basically our given land, um, the Chen commandery. Uh, it's our prince dome. And we have every piece of it as well. It's going to be our big food out producer here with the farmland and livestock farm. And early on, uh, we're neighboring our, uh, I guess you'd be our nephew, the emperor, and a lot of other empire factions. So if we look at diplomacy, no one's against us. Rebellion's going to spawn over here. So eventually, we might need to cross the river to help. But in the beginning, there's really no rush. Uh, historically, we were known to be uh, very judiciary. means we, we don't go out of our land. We just did a really, really good job of taking care of our own land. And we can play in a similar style, or it can be really aggressive as well. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we start out with two items. Uh, this banner doesn't count. This is part of our trophy cabinet. You always start the game out with the Imperial banner given to us by the Emperor himself. We got an Overseer. Very, very good item. Especially for 
uh, Liu Chong because he has uh, a th- he's authority focused because he's a commander and he likes to use range units so cunning also helps uh, stone monkey very very nice let's see let's put them on our general who he's the only one on the field and we'll just give him both items uh, so even if we didn't get the stone monkey we start out with the stone pig which also gives instinct um, We'll do the stone pig. This one has a set bonus in case we get a set in the future. Uh, Ebron Prince. Uh, we start out with a legendary horse. Very, very nice. I mean, he just get all the good treatment, I think. He didn't get a legendary weapon. But eventually, this slot will go to um, bow. Uh, he will start out with his uh, unique crossbow. Yeah, not a bow, crossbow. Uh, we kind of looked at all these characters in the lore series. So I'm going to skip out on that. Uh, we will look at the trophy cabinet. So we can pop in the banner. Uh, we can equip all four. Uh, there's no turn cooldown. There's no unlock. If you have them, you can put them on. And there's, I believe, about 20, 20 of them. Yeah, there's six to a column. So yeah, 19 that's not unlocked and plus the one. So there's 20 of them. And I kind of broke down their bonuses before. 10 experience per turn. Okay, population growth. Ammo for archers. Uh, range block chance basically a bunch of good stuff and you can see how to unlock them uh, by hovering over them so this one can be unlocked by reaching the marquis rank and this is the book that we wrote uh which talks about how to use the crossbow and dented helms um, some of these come in sets so there's like uh, silk items so if it has the silk in its name like silk tassel it's all um, upkeep reduction um, similarly here, silk headdress. This is for sword and shield unit. This one's for spear units. And there's different banners. Like the one we have gives plus 10 morale for melee cavalry. And these other banner provides morale for other units. And this one for yellow turban banner, we just got to beat them as a commanding officer. And you can work towards certain ones. Like if you are looking to get the silk belt, you want to win three duels. So definitely familiarize yourself with these, uh, unlock requirements before you start just so that you know if you're going for a certain one you know how to get it uh, for example um, I really want there's one that I really really want well I would really like this for example since I like to use artillery I would really want to have the reclaimed siege engine so plus 25% range damage for artillery I need to have a ranked up rank up five units of artillery. So first I need to have five units of artillery and rank them up five times. Or perhaps I can have one artillery unit that ranks up. No, five units. Okay, so I need to have five artillery units to start and also need to rank them up. Uh, this one I really, really want to have as well. 100% ammo for all artillery unit. That seems very, very broken. Uh, so we definitely could just spam artillery. Maybe five crossbow, multiple crossbow uh, unit. Anyways. Uh, we'll start out with this fight. Um, I'm going to fight it just so that uh, we can see our units on the battlefield. I think it'll be pretty clean. Uh, let's start this thing. All right, we're loaded up in here. Uh, enemy cavalry units incoming. We have a standard crossbow unit and a Chen Royal Guard. We can compare these two. Uh, so first, Chen Royal Guards. They have an alternate um, formation that's called Mixed Missile. It's only available for them. Uh, it looks very similar to the Mixed Missile for Azure Dragons uh, and Bringer of Righteousness for Yellow Turbans. Uh, what Basically, you have a front line of melee units with a back line of uh, range units. And the whole idea here is that you have Charge Negate because your units are using swords, I believe. Oh no, they're spears. Just short little spears. I think the logic is they're not Glaive units or uh, pole arm units. So they don't get charge reflect. That would be too OP. They get charge negate. So basically, if they get frontal charge, they take no damage from the charge. Uh, but they won't do any damage back onto the range unit. I don't think we will need that. Um, I trust our damage. Uh, we are slow hitting, like most crossbow units. Uh, we have 22 base damage, 50 armor piercing damage. So huge damage on these units. Excellent range, excellent ammo, despite the fact we're a commander. Uh, we also have... 45% range block chance because we carry a giant shield, which someone on the channel has taught me is for crossbow reloading. You turn your back to reload and the shield blocks it for your back. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. We have 45% range block chance. 
53% armor, 17% uh, shield armor, uh, decent melee evasion, excellent armor piercing melee damage. So this unit is just all around good. You send these guys out as uh, this combination of 7, 23, and 20 is similar to a spear guard from the base game if you want a comparison. Uh, you have super high morale so you can definitely have these guys just sitting on the front line like this to do range damage also block for your front line you don't need any spear guard unit uh, they can just do both things uh, compare this to the crossbowmen right you have five uh, melee, uh um, range attack range which is the same crossbow units are slow uh, but you get uh, basically uh, comparable damage everything is similar uh, to the crossbow unit except for you get more ammo um, but you get all the extra bonus melee stat that the crossbow unit don't have. So that's basically our unit right here. Uh, Chin Peacekeepers, um, they are basically your standard anti-missile um, cavalry. Oh, what's this? Ah, I see what they mean by range openers. Okay, so they are also range cavalry. Maybe they have crossbows? Yes, they do. Okay. That's really, really cool. I don't know if any of you are watching a Chinese drama. Uh, I know that I'm an English speaking YouTube channel, so maybe not many of you are watching uh, Chinese uh, dramas, uh, especially not historical or Three Kingdom related ones. But if any of you are watching a current drama called Qing Yu Yunian, uh, these guys are like Hei Qi. Uh, there's a cavalry unit in that drama where uh, they are a uh, crossbow unit on the left hand and a sword on the, or sword or spear on the right hand. A uh, very, very cool unit. Um, anyways, uh, that's off topic. And here's our commander. We'll get him into a duel. So range opener means we can, okay, we can just run these guys in first and then kite. That's really, really nice. Okay. Let's send both of these out. We'll keep them in the back. Our goal is to just pepper them with a few shot and lead them back to this unit. And then we'll get a duel out with the uh, enemy general. I'm pretty sure we can win. So for these dual using uh, cavalry unit, I don't think I need to turn this off. Do I need to turn them off? I might. Okay, fine. But the damage is excellent. 250 range. That's amazing. Alright, we're going to kite back. I don't know if we can shoot while moving. Maybe we can't do that. That might be too broken. Yeah, we're not firing well running. We'll just run back to the side and get a couple shot in. Let's see if their unit actually stand a chance against our crossbow fire. We're not actually doing damage. Oh, we've killed five guys. All right, they're getting closer. All right, we're actually getting some damage. They're not auto firing, which is really weird. Oh, maybe just really slow. Alright, we'll counter charge. Alright, we charge negated that damage. Now we just need these guys to be on the side. They're fine. We'll turn these guys to melee. These guys will fire. I want to see the execution. Chase them down. Come on, Prince. We're getting flipped around all the time. That's the third time we got flipped around. There we go. It's very Japanese style. Slice of the sword. Okay. We're going to let them go. It's fine. Alright. Just to get a taste of the units. Get some income. Alright, so we got our very nice boost here. And they asked us to equip the banner, which we're already done. 
uh, we'll get a thousand gold and we'll get five turns of plus one fortitude. Oh yeah, we have a unique faction resource as well. We'll talk about that. Uh, minus two mustering uh, per turn. A lot of plus two percent replenishment. They really want us to start out with an army. A lot of ways to encourage that. And then we want building plus 20 prestige. Huh. Okay. So this is fortitude. Uh, there's a, it's a decaying resource. Uh, the more you have it, uh, the more uh, bonuses you get in terms of morale, enemy morale, losing morale uh, from defending enemy forces. I encourage you to attack. And when you attack, you hurt the enemy morale. When you defend, you increase your own morale. And you get extra experience per turn and uh, replenishment bonuses on your units. So that's very, very cool. And then once you hit top tier, uh, which I think is 300, uh, it's 50 per tier. So between 150 and 200, uh, the decay is 8 for 2 per turn. But you also get immune to scaring on all retinues. Not sure how important that is. Um, the only scaring, there's some, there's quite a few new units that have scare uh, on the units. For the Yellow Turban, for example, the Chosen of the Eight Immortals that we used have Scare on them. So perhaps it's useful, but I think it's going to be quite hard to maintain uh, this Fortitude uh, here. And we gain Fortitude by um, uh, winning battles and inflicting greater casualty on enemy force than they inflict on you. Kind of like how it worked with um, Heroism uh, with Sun Jian, but a little bit different. So my summary of this unit at its cost is not so good um you don't have very much charge you do have decent damage i have to say for cavalry unit this unit's actually quite good in terms of damage after the initial charge right you have 24 attack speed 26 20 for the breakdown of melee uh, base damage versus armor piercing so that's quite good 80% range block chance. I think that's mostly because we have uh, nobility. Uh, standard wise, it should just be 60, I think, unless they change the bonus here. Yep, still plus 20%. So it's not that high. 80% is not super high. I think melee cavalry has starts out with 65 and goes to 85. So 80 itself is, oh, unless they patch that. I'm not sure if they did. We can check. Right, so 65. I did remember correctly. So the base is 65 and goes to 85. So in terms of being a frontline sponge against enemy range units, it's not as effective. Although you do have a lot of armor. Uh, 53 is quite a bit. And also shield armor. Um, so it's an interesting unit. It's a very all-round unit. Uh, maybe in the late game, it's definitely something to consider. But I think in the early game, it's too expensive. So I'm actually going to disband it. I'm going to try to play it a little bit more serious, like my traditional style, being uh, very min-maxing here. Um, I love these units. I don't think I can afford six retinues of them, so we're going to keep the crossbow unit as well, um, because that's probably much what we're going to try to fill our army with. Um, other than that, uh, we don't have much. Uh, this is our commandery here in, uh, in Trunt. We have quite a few assignment slots, but we don't have that many characters for assignments. Uh, he can give us food, but that's the one thing we don't need as the start for um, Liu Chong. Um, we seen the, well, I seen the uh, CA gameplay uh, for Liu Chong, so I know there's going to be looters that come around, and that's fine. Uh, we're going to keep our army minimum until that happens, and we're going to decide how to build these commanders. I don't like having a patrol, a military infrastructure in the beginning. I feel it's quite wasteful. Uh, we're just going to plant food and maybe add a little bit of commerce. Or actually, I would like to farm rebels. So we might demolish this as well. We might go with land development, government support, and tax collection. We're going to upgrade the farmland. Maybe not. Maybe it's better it's level 1. We might lose it. Not sure how that goes. Uh, only thing I'm worried here is if I upgrade this, it might take too much time. Mm. We'll wait on that. Over here, we'll build this, which will activate the mission. Or we can build this. Actually, let's build this. I don't need the food multiplier. I would like a tax building up. 
we'll keep this as well. It is free 110 income. Yeah, we'll just demolish the patrol. And we'll get this building started. And I think we're good. Um, I think we're good. We're working towards the banner. 15, okay. So you can see the progress. Like, we won a duel. So we got... The progress press doesn't feel 33% though. Anyways, let's continue with the turn. I think we're ready. I don't want to spend money on units yet. Ah, we have an open administrator slot. And we have an open air slot. We could put him in. Uh, it's definitely an option, but there's going to be a mission since I already saw what the CA put out in the content for their release. He's going to go in the Chancellor slot. So we're just going to go Administrator list for now. Let's continue. And I realized we forgot to do trade again. Ah, <sighs> sigh. Forgetting things here. I do want a strategist just because I want the siege weapons. And he can also be a Administrator. Right, he can go towards this route. And he can develop into quite a decent spy. I don't see anything wrong about this guy. We might recruit him. What mission did we get? Ah, reached rank. Uh, that's not too hard. Once we get a building, we get 20 prestige for 5 turns. I'm going to recruit him. I don't care about the other two. He's also young. We can make him our administrator. Yeah, in, in front, because it's the only place with commerce income. And we'll just head back. We could add him into our army. Unless we can get flexibility soon. No, we can't. Okay. I want to get rid of these. We're going to do tax collection as well. Oh, we do need characters though. And we do want to trade. Okay, Taotian sounds good. Yeah, so if we are playing seriously in the future for a campaign, what we're going to do is most likely get the trade deal done, scout around to see who has good items in the beginning. Um, I'm going to offer him a food just so that he can give us some money. Is he this poor or is he just not willing to pay us? It's 22. Come on. Give it to us. Alright. Yeah, we're in the Empire, so there's like no one to really talk to. We could also grab him. Just because he can give us assignment. It's like paying a thousand for assignment. His traits not terrible. Yeah, his tra his traits are okay. Like we can throw him on the battlefield later. All right, we'll pick him up. I want a I want an assignment. You're not happy here. Well, too bad. We need you here. It doesn't get along with our strategist. And I think that's it. 
pick a reform. Not much to do. Very quiet beginning. I think we need to get a building built first before we get anything. Uh, so we started with this reform. That's why we have an administrator slot from the beginning. We can get another trade route for money or we can save money uh, by getting this one. Uh, which since we need an army anyways. It's just my excuse to get deployables. Alright, the Emperor is making his moves. So we're getting prestige bonuses now. We are second Marquis already. Right, so here's the mission where we have to appoint him to Chancellor. That's why I didn't appoint him as Administrator. And he'll give us the gift. And his gift will be the Legendary Crossbow. And Chancellor position is not so terrible for us because we do have a lot of peasantry income. The finest crossbow. Here's our Prince Lu Liu Chong's crossbow. Plus 10% extra ammo for own retinue. That plays very well. Extra cunning as well. Uh, just a very strong item overall. We're going to give him this pig. Yep. Everything's good. He's also burnt. So Luo Jun is also burnt. Like, it's perfect. You're just getting all these range bonuses. Like, when's the last time you saw a champion character who's burnt? Uh, what do we want? We got another assignment, but we don't have another character. We're just basically character poor. Um, I'm going to hoard a lot of cash. I'm sure you guys are not surprised hearing that. I'm just going to hoard a lot of cash. Uh, I kind of want to keep it now that we have a administrator here that does that commerce boost. I think that's it. I think we can just go to next turn. Very, very calm start for the Empire factions. All right, still nothing going on. When are the looters going to start appearing? I guess they might start appearing after the rebellion start. Maybe. Okay, we finally get some recruits. We need characters. That's what we really need. Well, Zhou Tai is awesome. We do need a vanguard. We also need more strategists. Wait, Chen Chu. He was in the capital. Wow. 100% income from commerce. That's actually very attractive. Imagine having him playing as uh, Sun Jian. Greedy. Arrogant. Deceit. Hard to use, but definitely mm, tempting character. I feel like we could grab Joel Tai. We could also grab him. I kind of want him just because of this. Now, he's not going to be very useful for assignments. But maybe he'll be useful for our army position. And we also have a Sentinel who we should definitely grab. If anything, for the 15%. We could also check this skill tree here. We could have done this. And he's perfect. He has the administrative skill lined up, even though we don't have any uh, commerce and uh, counties for him. But we can definitely put him here just temporarily for the 15% discount. Uh, we still don't have any characters for assignments out of these guys. Let's see. Bandit. Do they have any... Skills that give them extra assignments. That's what I'm kind of looking for. Or else he's just going to be here planting food. Which doesn't really serve us. Oh, he could be a good administrator. He has the 20% peasantry income. Okay, so maybe we should recruit him. Let's grab him. Get his mission. 
upgrade the settlement. Okay. We, I want to upgrade Chen. So I think he can be a good administrator instead of our strategist. If we replace him now, he's going to be a little mad at us, but I think he'll be fine. We'll remove him from office. And we'll put him in here. Uh, this UI is messed up. It's much easier here. Alright. So now I can kind of demolish this building and just go wholeheartedly into peasantry once we get that done. We'll recruit him into the army. Labor recruiter. So we want to give him this. Yeah, minus 6 resolves better than minus 12. And let's see if we can get some more expertise. That's as much as we can get. Yeah, we just anything to get a little bit extra percentage here. Okay. I think we're good. I think we can probably start recruiting armies too before this buff goes away. Minus 10% um, recruitment and also minus 2 turn mustering. So if we're recruiting armies, I'm going to pump out a few more Chen Royal Guards. As many as we can really afford here. Oh, we can actually afford a bunch. Okay, I'm okay with that. And then for him, I think just a few Z Militia to protect the flank is okay. Gotta save money somewhere. And then we'll summon the strategist into the army next turn. Or we can send him out as a spy, but then we have no strategist. So maybe not. Let's continue. Okay, we finally got the looters missions. Uh, five units of missile infantry. A new mission for us to recruit five missile infantry in Liu Chong's army. Well, we did that, so we're going to get this bonus again. Mission success right away. And we have three looter armies, and we get call to arm, extra, well, cheaper retinue upkeep for five turns, and also plus five, three percent replenishment. Graffiti again. We talked about this in the Sun Dian campaign. So looters are threatening our land. Just two? Where's the third army? Wait, shouldn't there be three? Maybe there'll be more looters. Um, we can't reach them in time anyways, so... I don't feel like I'm in a rush to go defend. And somehow I think the garrison's enough against that army. Yeah, I'm not moving. I wanted one more turn mustering first. Let's see, anything else to build? No, we're good. We could run an assignment, but he doesn't have any peasantry income. I want to add him to the army. That's what I want to do. Well, rivalry bonus is also nice. If we can get a rivalry between the strategists with these two characters and both of them get a damage boost, that's not bad. We'll get rid of these because we can recruit much better ones from the plus rank, right? I want these. So technically we want five of them, uh, but we can't afford it right away. Um, we're good, let's just continue. All right, so there's a big looter army on the side here, too. We can delegate and get the win, but we'll probably lose to this army, but that's fine. All right. We lost four or two because we lost more men than they did. So it's kind of like heroism. Uh, we'll get income. All righty. So the rebellion's going to start soon. Bandit. If we got a farmer, that would be so good. He's also not bad. Extra food. Extra income from all sources. 
also a decent candidate for um, uh, administrator. We can grab him for assignments. Right, let's grab him. And work here. Gotta be happy somewhere. Alright, now I feel comfortable moving down. We're gonna lose the farmland, but that's not a big deal. Alright, we finish upgrading this. I want to upgrade this, which is also one of our missions. Perfect. Let's continue. Alright, so we're going to lose this fight. Uh, I, I don't want to fight it or do any damage. We'll delegate. Alright, Cao Cao declares war on Zhang Liang. Ding Yuan declares war on Looter. So Looter is everywhere. Rebellion's everywhere. Oh, he's a great administrator. Yeah, but he's 57 as well, so maybe we don't need him. Can we actually reach them? I don't know. Wow, okay. Guess we have to wait another turn to fight. We get a reform, so I guess we'll get deployables. Perfect. Mm, nothing to build here? Ah, because we're poor. That's right. Let's continue. Alright, so we get to fight some looters. They're trying to sandwich us, but I think we got them pretty good. Alrighty, we're loaded up in here. Um, reinforcement's the one we want to hit. So we're going to actually set up our units to get ready for them. What we're going to do is probably mix missile for two of them. And then we'll just stack everyone else behind. Kind of like this. And then we'll block the sides with the G militia. We'll keep Luo Jun here to hold down the fort. And then we're going to send Liu Chong by himself over to attack these guys over there. We're also going to pop down a tower. Maybe just in the middle. And then spikes, fire, yeah, we'll do fire. Let's go. We can solo this group. Now the thing about the fire is we gotta like loop around and then loop back and not run into spikes. Here comes their cavalry. We're ready. Seems like the looter army, the main one, every if for every uh, faction is going to be heavy cavalry. Not dead yet. Oh, we didn't even use our crossbow. Oh, I should have sniped him. Uh, let's see. Do we want to fight him? I want to see how strong he is. Uh, we'll just take it. We have good items. Charge. How strong is he? Oh, he's not strong. Wow, they managed to get a rear charge. Can you believe it? We'll charge them. Guess no one's there to light the fire. That's fine. We can always adapt. Oh, uh, Imo first get into position. 
Gotta protect ourselves from all these charges. Oh, wrong side. What happened? I thought we had it. Guess not. The thing is, we're very good even when we're not using our crossbow. Execution here? Ooh. They're capturing our tower? How? We have units on it. Alright, use your sword. Stick to that unit. Grab your actually just grab your crossbow and shoot them from the back. Well, we're getting charged. Fine. We'll fight them off first. Come back and help. I think we can just get these guys back on crossbow duty. That's it. Right? Should be everyone. Messy. Alright. Pretty easy deal here. Finally got some forward tooth. And we'll get money. The old turbine rebellion started. All right, we gotta kill the three brothers. Hmm. Not that great. So instead of hunting them down for the mission, I'm gonna take the land back before Yanshu steals it from us. I'm gonna occupy it. There's no garrison. Eventually, we'll, we'll hunt him down. But not now. Now we are friendly on the same side. At least on the surface. Alright, let's upgrade food. And then we'll wait to hunt down that last army. I think eventually we'll throw him onto the battlefield. So I think we'll go on the top side here. And let's continue. I think there's nothing to do. Yep, still calm. I think the whole plan is you're going to have rebellion spawn, like say here, right? After this event. So you might lose a farmland here that you have to go reclaim. And there's going to be uh, Huang Shao's faction spawning over here. So you, my play style, if I'm playing this uh, later on, would be I'll just stay on my side of the river and just consolidate power, taking land away from allies after they lose it to the yellow turban and build up quite a force because eventually our long-term goal is to a make sure the yellow turbans don't win but b eventually make ourselves the emperor so we have to strengthen ourselves before we can do that so got to build up on this side can't be just throwing our best army over there to fight the yellow turbans when in reality what we want is this place we love our nephew he's just not good for the country uh, let's continue. Hmm. Taotian is willing to pay us quite a bit for military access. We can definitely negotiate this because we do want to go through his land to fight yellow turbans if that's a possibility. Uh, so maybe he'll give us some more cash. We are quite poor with our army of very elite units. And I think if uh, you're playing this regularly, maybe you don't need to go for so many Chen Royal Guards. Alright, so 
immediately it's busy season all of a sudden. Uh, you have looters still on the map, and you have yellow turban rebellions everywhere. So definitely need to put them down. And uh, Huang Shao is officially on the map after wiping out Tell Mao, taking over Dong. And this group is actually not coming after us. It's actually going after Lu Zhi. Poor guy. Hope he holds on. We will be hunting down this for the quest. And of course he runs, but we catch up. Nice. I uh, will just delegate this fight. Look at that crossbow on our back. We didn't even get to use it. Alright. We captured him. So this looter is kind and intimidating and cautious, yet we captured him. He's not terrible, but I don't really want him. We'll just release for the money. Alright, we got a thousand gold, call to arm, extra replenishment's good. Uh, clearly we need to go back, but livestock farm's also under threat. Mm. This is very empty right now. We'll let him take it. It's fine. We'll go save the rest of the city. We need more characters. But there's not that many good ones, to be fair. Yeah, I had my eye on him. I guess we'll take him. And what we can do is put him just on assignment farming food. It's playing more food in, in Tron right now. Plus one food, plus three. So same. Because it's minus two food for a small city. So we put him here. Get extra food production. We can trade food away. I really, really want a range unit, uh, a siege weapon. So we're going to spend a little bit of cash and get one. Let's continue. All right, we build a settlement. So we got the Chancellor mission done. Lion Rebellion happened. Great, our country is getting torn apart. Um, anyways, for him, we're going to go Guile. Oh, a eunuch. Or not a eunuch, but he has a eunuch looking clothes. 100% income from looting settlements. These are interesting buffs. Oh, he is a eunuch. There we go. Confirmed. Eunuch clothes. It's funny how they have minus 1,000% of having children and minus 1,000% of having illegi illegitimate children. Um, I think the purpose of this is so that if you have a boost like fertility, like fertile, like Lady Wu, uh, you can't somehow have a eunuch have a child. If you just program in like minus 100%, but someone's plus 50, then there's a 50% chance eunuch having children. So to prevent that, you just write a thousand in and just end all hopes. Anyways, uh, we're not gonna grab ourselves a eunuch. I don't think so. There's no reason to. Faction-wise, character salary goes up by 10% just having him. Yeah, we're going to pass. It looks like the Emperor is making his move, firing people. They didn't go to the farm, uh, livestock farm. I'm a little surprised. I'm okay losing this because it's not contributing anything to us. Hmm. Just trying to get as close as we can. Because we're only a large town. Which is a big issue. Let's get another mission. Hire a character. I, I've been hiring. Where have you been? Uh, we'll hire another one later. Let's continue. All right. Ludri is done. Wow. He got destroyed. Uh, well, it's interesting. These looters, these, these uh, yellow turban rebels are not interested in attacking settlements. They're just walking around. Look at them. I don't know why. Ah, Xun Yu. Ah, join the party. Join us. Nice. He's one of the new unique models. Uh, he was in the base game. That's hiring a unit. There we go. Five more turns of this.
Ooh, Book of Rights. We need an heir. We need a wife. That's what we need. We're 43. We're not young. We need a... Lady Tsai. Liu Bao divorced you? At least he chased you out. Well, maybe we found ourselves a wife. We, we have a thousand gold. We can consider it. Is she still married? I think she's still married. Because this slot is for uh, marriages. If we recruit her, we have to divorce her first. She might be carrying good items. Oh. Past loyalties to Liu... Wait, 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 wait. She wasn't married to Liu Bao in this campaign. Interesting. I mean, I know she's a... Yeah, she probably married Liu Bao after 182. Because she's technically his second wife. Okay. Well, anyways. We could get her as a wife. But it seems like she has a relationship here. And we are really, really poor because we went with a super expensive army. Um, we can cut down some costs here. Z Militia is something I don't think we need. And honestly, if you guys are playing uh, as Liu Chong, don't go with five Chen Royal Guards. They're cool, but you don't have the econ for them in the beginning. So now we're stuck with no cash. Mm, I don't mind the public water drops. Especially here in Chen. Plus two public water. Okay. If we give up the crossbow, it's going to hurt us. We can always swap them before battle. Right. Kind of cheating, but we can swap them before a fight. kind of suck that they're just running around. I can't actually hunt them down. And I wonder if they're going to cross. I'm going to just sit here and see what they do. I don't know what they're going to do. That's the thing. Let's continue. I can also get rid of him now. Send him out as a spy maybe. But he has this unit on him. Now that we have Xun Yu, we definitely want him in the army. Wow, plus five character experience in this army. Oof. Say no more. Alright, we're going to get rid of this. Unit. We're going to recall him. I'm going to fire him. We could also send him out as a spy, but that's expensive too in itself. 120. Mm. We'll consider this. He's a good spy. He has quiet. Let's continue. We'll get a trade route next turn. Alright, we found our real opponent. Land of Peace. It is late as you sit with your advisor, Luo Jun. The wise lord chooses the right path when presented with a fork in the road. You stand upon this precipice now. We seek to create a land free from suffering. The people already respect you, but you must choose how to become a legend. For a legend can never be destroyed. Will you lead with the forge or the kirin? Speak freely and I shall test your resolve. Uh, we were going to do great works. This is basically a historical path too. Liu Chong was never written heavily in the history books because all he did was take care of his land until he got assassinated. But he did a great job of taking care of his land. Right, so now we're getting all these construction related missions. And our enemy is He Yi. We're going to run all the way over here. We're going to recruit Xun Yu. Um, I don't think I need these archers, so I'm going to get rid of them. We just get two Burin buffs with Chen Royal Guards. I think we can beat this army. Um, but anyways, that's not important here. I'm focused too much on actually playing. We're just trying to showcase the options we have. It's nice we got that mission to pop up, because then we can see all the routes we have available. And we even build ourselves quite a roster uh, from what we started. 
Now thinking back, he's not that good of administrator because we're mainly focused on peasantry, so we should have got commanders and in, uh, champions instead. Um, and the best thing he can provide for us now is actually extra expertise, right? If we get extra expertise, we get more construction cost discount. The extra 15% uh, industry and 40% commerce isn't going to help us. Uh, he needs to go get food. That's what he needs to do. So reserves. So trust, wisdom, and abundance are the uh, skills we should focus on when looking for good potential administrators. All right. We'll develop him as just a court assignment, I think. Yeah, so we're going to go toward industrial exploitation. So we could technically make him a uh, administrator and put him out as a Simon character because he's slightly better than him. So we don't need to keep this many uh, people on our roster. But the idea is basically the same. Um, I think we can probably end it. I don't even think we need to play episode 2. I think I really want to play Liu Chong as a full let's play once the DLC comes out because just personally I like the character. Kind of rewriting history here. Um, but I think we get the general gist of how to play his faction. You start out super calm. Uh, the John brothers are going to expand towards you and your job is just to hold them off and hold off He Yi who is going to develop around Yuan Shu's land and then also contain uh, Huang Shao. Uh, you don't really need to worry much about uh, you know the capital because He Jin is basically sitting pretty with the entire imperial army. They can definitely hold their own. We just need to hold our, our land and do some more construction missions. So if you guys enjoy this type of passive buildup and not all the way in over there, Lotron is definitely a good consideration. Good range units. Um, some interesting side missions to do as you uh, unlock certain items. At 15 range unit total for this uh, bow, you know, you can just see which one you like and go after these items. And uh, we're going to end our guide here. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this preview. We'll be back with Liu Bei uh, later today, I think. I'll try to push one out uh, tonight. So see you guys then. Bye.